Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we have a review of chapter 946, Queen versus Olin. And just like that, Queen has fallen. Now there were a fair few people last week who insisted that Queen would not be taken down in one shot as I suspected, and you know what? They were right. It was a mighty two shots that was required to bring down a man worth 1.3 billion berries. I'm a pretty big fan of how this interaction played out because I expect nothing less than a completely overwhelming power from Big Mom. Although I do think it is a bit of a shame that we did not get to see more of Queen in his ancient Zoan form, but at the same time, I do not think that this will be the end of his involvement in the Wano arc. There's still a huge amount of time before the invasion of Onigashima is set to begin, so I see Queen as being able to regroup and recover somewhat, and then going on to have a more extended battle with someone or even a group of people. And of course, I should point out that Queen is, yes, still conscious. And some people are arguing that he's more or less playing dead, knowing that he stands no chance against Big Mom, which is an interesting idea, but not an interpretation I get at all looking at the panel, as well as the greater context of the past few chapters. Firstly, in that panel where we see Queen conscious, there are little strained lines all around his head, indicating that he's having quite a bit of difficulty moving. And also, if he could stand and fight, he most definitely would, because he knew that she was a Yonko before and challenged her over his beloved Oshiriko anyway. So if he could fight, I think he most most certainly would be, meaning that the dude is quite firmly down. But there is every chance that he will return to action at some stage soon. That I cannot deny. Still, the panel of Big Mom swinging him by the neck is so beautifully drawn. There's just such a great sense of chaos and devastation conveyed, which makes the eventual panel of Queen being thrown and defeated all the more impactful. But probably one of the greater aspects of this chapter for me is how it completely subverted my expectations with Big Mom. I've more or less been operating on the theory that her falling into a hunger tantrum was going to turn her into the hulking mass of rage that we endured on Hawk Island. But even in this form with amnesia, Big Mom is still a kind person at heart who wanted to bring the Oshiriko back to the village to share with everyone. And I love this development because now we are witness to a truly different side of this character. And it also gives us options to get out of this situation without going on another 30 chapter rampage. I mean, imagine a situation in which a San Olin is just allowed to give up because these cravings don't have as much control over her. Or there's also the potential that she could be reasoned with in this state as opposed to previous hunger tantrums. For example, it would be easy to see Luffy or Chopper or someone saying something along the lines, of taking her to Sanji and having him cook up some Oshiriko, actually. Or well, you know what, perhaps even some of his now famous soba. Whatever the case, there are other ways out of this situation now, which is something I was very worried about when Big Mom entered her tantrum state because of how previously impossible it had been to break. With all of that said, it doesn't look like things are going to be quite that simple though, as the chapter ended with Hyogoro deciding that this would be the perfect chance to train Luffy and cool. This is the kind of training I can get on board with, rather than the whole fighting fodder in the arena thing. This seems more akin to the Katakuri situation, where Luffy actually has to put his life on the line to gain something, which we also saw happen in this very chapter, by the way. I really enjoyed it when Luffy discovered how to rip off the collars, very, very reminiscent of how Ray Lee was able to swiftly dispose of the similar collars at the human auction house pre time skip. And the best part was definitely the brief moment afterwards where Luffy was surprised that whatever he did actually worked, which resulted in a slightly confusing panel, actually, because it would appear that we see Luffy's thoughts in those speech bubbles thinking something along the lines of what a surprise that was. And that's strange because that pretty much never happens in One Piece. And Oda has even stated in the SPS of volume 54 that he does not like to show Luffy thinking because he's the kind of character who if he's thinking something, he'll just go ahead and say it anyway. So instead, these are quite possibly the thoughts of Hyogoro going, yeah, that was a surprise, which makes a bit more sense given that that would be the first step towards him coming to the conclusion that he needs to throw Luffy up against Big Mom to further his haki, having just seen a successful application of it in the face of death. But apart from that hilarious moment of surprise, Luffy Luffy was full of other comedy gold this week. Another favorite moment of mine was when he engaged in Luffy logic, deducing that Big Mom was unable to recognize him due to the fact that he was dressed like a samurai. This was just such a perfect moment of classic Luffiness, but also the whole accidentally admitting to have eaten the Oshiriko in the first place was fantastic. Now, while Luffy certainly does not stand a chance against Big Mom in the long run, this actually seems like a fairly favorable situation because he'll be taking her on while she is assumedly not invoking her own haki, purely due to lack of knowledge. So in a way, it's almost like facing off against the giant creatures on Rusukaina during his two years of training. Once again, I don't think that this is going to allow him to overcome Big Mom and I really hope it doesn't because there would be nothing more horrendous to deal with than the insufferable louder segments of the One Piece fan base if Luffy so much as manages to scratch Big Mom because then all of the disappointed bullshit about her being far too weak under Joe Gyongo will start up again despite the fact that she completely fodderized a man with one of the highest known bounties in the history of the series this very chapter. So I think that Luffy will get in, learn his thing and then need to be saved, possibly by Kawamatsu who now seems to finally be free of 
of his dark, dark cell. So we should be expecting that incredibly bizarre character reveal very soon. Similarly, Kit and Killer were released from their threat of imminent death. So all the pieces are falling into place for us to leave the prisoner mine and quite possibly conclude act two of Wano. In regards to Kit and Killer though, I'm not sure if this is just me, but is anyone else at a bit of a loss as to just why Luffy actually cares so much about them? Like sure, he doesn't want to see them die, that's fine. But once they're released, he actually calls out to them all concerned like. I think I find it odd because they aren't people that he has any particular investment in and a more Luffy action would be to breathe a sigh of relief at the fact that they're all right and then just leave them be on their own journey. So a future alliance is being pretty heavily thrown together by Oda here, which is great because I don't think we need to waste more time convincing Kid at least to become a temporary ally. The effect of which would surely make convincing Hawkins and Drake to jump ship a lot easier as well. Also Wapu, wherever he happens to be. But another major part of this chapter also has to do an awful lot with Karabo. And wow, he is a much smarter little swamp man than I've ever given him credit for. It's also heavily implied that he'll be a close ally going forward with Raizo's words that he is quite a useful asset, which is the second time Karabo has been referred to in such a way. And as much as I thought he was quite pointless during Fishman Island, I'm very much looking forward to what he can bring to the table in terms of weird utility power or knowledge and even general comedy. Hopefully by the end of Wano, he might even be redeemed within the eyes of the fan base like so many other villains before him who go on to become quite enjoyable after their initial arcs are completed. And that's kind of it for the content of the chapter though. It was pretty heavily focused on action with a bit of intrigue and character development. So it went by pretty fast, but I enjoyed it an awful lot. Seeing any of the Onko in action is always a treat and I can't wait to see how this whole Prisoner Mind section concludes. But that pretty much does it for chapter 946. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel new world review for all of your wider needs and if you'd like to join the fun at any time then please do head over to my discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis and finally please do comment with your thoughts on the chapter this has been the grand line review and i'll see you next time